Hello everyone and welcome to class. Our topic for today is chemical laws and I'm Dr. Oluwa Kalumi. I'll be taking you through this class. Alright, so let's just start. Well, there are four laws of chemical combination which describes the general features of a chemical change. And these laws form the basis of chemistry. So this forms the fundamental of chemistry. So this is very important. And they are the law of conservation of mass, the law of definite proportion, the law of multiple proportions, the law of reciprocal proportion. So let's move to the law of conservation of mass. You would remember that in uh, while studying the Dalton's law of atomic theory that he said that um, atom can neither be created nor destroyed, but it changes from one form to another. And so also it, it is with mass, because um, mass um, we say matter is anything that contains space and occupies, anything that contains um, mass, that has mass rather, and occupies space. So an atom is a very small unit of a mass or of a matter. So this law also goes with uh, that of mass. So the law of the first law is the law of conservation of mass, which states that matter is neither created nor destroyed during chemical reaction, but changes from one form to another. So we do not lose the mass of any um, react uh, of any chemical element that is going on in the reaction. Well, an example is in the case of um, burning of coal. Coal is an allotrope of carbon. It's Allotropy is another way in which carbon can exi exist. So we have um, carbon undergoing um, combustion that's burning in oxygen air to give us carbon dioxide. And in giving us this carbon dioxide, we have other things that it releases. We have several gases. We have in burning of coal, we have um, ashes uh, released. We have soot. These are um, byproducts from the combustion of coal. And if you add everything up, is still going to take you back to the initial mass you started with. Let's say you burnt five gram of carbon in 10 gram of oxygen, that's making a total of 15 gram on the reactant side, which is the left hand side. You will still get 50 gram, 15 gram of whatever it is on the product side, be it the residual gases and the major product. So I hope that is clear. Well, we'll move to the second law, which is the law of definite proportion. This law states that all pure sub samples of particular chemical compound contain similar elements combined in the same proportion by mass. This is very simple. Based on the fact that when elements combine to form a given compound, they do so in fixed proportions by mass so that um, a pure sample so that um so that pure samples of that compound are identical in composition by mass. So when um, when elements combined together there's a definite proportion in which they combine and that's why when we have hydrogen combined with oxygen we have it combined with in the ratio of two to one we have two items of hydrogen combining with one um, atom of oxygen to give us water so no matter where the source of water is coming from it is always in the ratio of two is to one that's what we mean by law of definite proportion so also uh, other compounds you can think of of which is um, example carbon dioxide CO2, the one we breathe out, it is always in the proportion of one is to two, one atom of carbon and two carbon, two atoms of oxygen rather. I hope that is clearly understood. We we'll move to the third law, which is the law of multiple proportion, and this states that if two elements A and B combine to form more than one chemical compound, then the various masses of one element A, which combine separately with a fixed mass of the other elements B are in simple multiple ratios. So uh, let, let me explain this. If we have a compound A and B that is reacting, uh, if we have an element rather A and B reacting with a fixed mass of another element, what we are saying is that they have, they, the mass will be in simple multiple ratio to one another. Let's look at the example of where we have ion 2. Ion 2 reacting with oxygen, we have ion 2 oxide. And when we have ion 3 reacting with oxygen, we have ion 3 oxide. So you will note that according to the law of multiple proportion, the compounds are in ratio of what? 2 to 3. 
note that they are all reacting with a fixed mass of oxygen which is one molecule of oxygen so they are, the ratio will be two to three wow so i hope that's understood but to verify the law of multiple proportion i have this table here and we're going to solve the question that comes with it we have copper one oxide and copper two oxide we have the mass of the sample that's the mass of the total the the oxide as 3.04 gram the mass of copper that remained as 2.55 gram and the mass of oxygen removed from the oxide to be 0 0.49 all right and for the carbon two oxide we have 1.91 gram to be the mass of the sample we have 1.38 gram to be the mass of copper and 0 0.53 gram to be the mass of oxygen all right so to calculate the various masses of copper we will notice that there's a difference in the combination of copper here so to calculate the various masses of copper which would combine separately with one gram of oxygen we have that 0 0.49 gram of oxygen will combine with 2.55 gram of copper and uh, one gram of oxygen will combine with 2.5 uh, with um, one times 2.5 divided by 0 0.49 okay so i hope you understand that and we we'll also do that so for copper 2 oxide where we have 0 0.53 gram of oxygen combining with um, 1.38 gram of copper and one gram of oxygen will combine with one times 1.38 divided by 0.49 gram to give us 2.6 gram. So we have the ratio of copper 2 oxide to copper 1 oxide. Copper 2 oxide is 2.6 gram. Copper 1 oxide is 5.2 gram. By the time you divide that to the smallest figure, we have 1 is to 2. So they are reacting in um, the ratio is 1 is to 2. So that's what um, the law of multiple proportion is all about. All right, lastly, we'll move to the law of reciprocal proportion. The law of reciprocal proportion states that masses of several elements A, B, and C, which combine separately with a fixed mass of another element D, are the same as or simple masses in which A, B, C themselves combine with one another. Okay, let me give an example. In cases where we have oxygen and sulfur reacting with copper to give copper oxide and copper sulfide um, respectively, we have also the, the sulfur and the oxygen reacting with one another to give us sulfur two or sulfur four oxide rather. So in um, you see that copper sulfide um, and um, copper oxide, you see the ratio is 3.5 to 32. Copper oxide is the 3.5 to 16. We are just comparing their atomic no, um, their molecular mass. For sulfur to oxygen is 32 to 16, which is 2 is to 1. And you can you will notice that from um, um, the relationship between sulfur and oxygen from copper sulfide. You look at the, the figure ending that of copper sulfide is 32. The figure ending that of copper oxide is 16. So when sulfur and oxygen again react together, the ratio between them will be 32 to 16, which is 2 is to 1. And that is what the law of reciprocal proportion is stating, that the masses of several elements, A, B, and C, that combine separately with a fixed mass of another element are the same as, are the same, or they are simple masses in which A, B, C themselves combine with one another. And remember that this, uh, this four laws are uh, the fundamental of chemistry. In some, we have that atoms can never, can never be created or destroyed, but change from one form to another. And that's why we have the law of conservation of mass. We have four laws. We have the law of conservation of mass, the law of definite proportion, the law of multiple proportions, and the law of reciprocal proportions. Okay, so we have come to the end of the class for today. But before I let you go, I'll I would be pleased if you would, you know, do this um, assignment. One, state and explain what law illustrates the combination of nitrogen and oxygen to form the following compounds. It's quite easy. Just read through the notes and 
the answer is just there. Then number two, a metal X forms two different chlorides. If 2.7 gram of chloride A and 16.3 gram of chloride B contain 7.1 gram and 10.7 gram of chlorine respectively, show that figures agree with the law of multiple proportion. This is quite, this is simple. This is just um, like the example we worked earlier. All right. Thank you for today's class and I hope to get feedback from you.